Eric Darling here with, as the sign says, Darling Data. And as you know, uh, signs never lie. Um, astrology signs, street signs, uh, sign language. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, don't know I guess you could, you could count stuff like tea leaves and chicken bones and tarot cards and stuff in there too. Uh, some of that slightly more open to interpretation, of course. So uh, we're not going to not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about binary strings. Why are we talking about this? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, every month, or is it every month? God, it feels, feels so often. I get these emails from Google because I have Google looking at my website and saying, this is the content that people find on your website. And one of the most popular blog posts that I have, which I don't know, <clears throat> that says something maybe about <laughs> my site, uh, uh, because man, I have a lot of content on there that I find terribly interesting. But one of my top performing pages is about how to convert binary strings correctly in SQL Server. <clears throat> um, I'm not really sure how to take that, but here we go. Before we do that, and I don't know, maybe I should start putting I should start putting this in like like random like commando guerrilla warfare parts of the video, so you just can't skip over it, but. Uh, I also try to make this a fun, lively, and vibrant part of the video so that you stay tuned, because who knows what I'll say in these things. Uh, if, if you just love everything I do so much, if you just want to give me a big hug with money, uh, you can sign up for a membership to the channel for four American dollars a month. Um, and that's a, that's a nice thing to do, because the more people do that, um, the, the, more, uh, the less in debt I am. So, you know. That's a great thing. Uh, if you are short four American dollars per month, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, uh, you've got a sick aunt and then uh <laughs> you, you can do other things to show your undying loyalty to Darling Data. Uh, you can like my videos. You can comment on my videos uh, to make me feel like I'm not alone in this cold world. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel so that you get a notification along with like um, over 4,600 other data darlings at this point um you can get notified whenever i drop drop this hot content on your heads so uh th those are those are other ways to to do things um if you are in need of a sql server consultant perhaps the kind of young and handsome consultant who can perform these rituals upon your sql server and heal it of its grievous wounds and injuries uh i'm pretty good at all this stuff and my rates are reasonable uh if you would like high quality High quality, low cost. There we go. Keep making sure I keep the highs and the lows in order there uh, on SQL Server. I offer uh, all of the above, beginner, intermediate, and expert level training on things. God, my hand looks weird at that angle. It's like long and knifey. Uh, <laughs> you can get all of that training for life. Long live you uh, for about 150 US dollars uh, uh, with the discount code spring cleaning even though it is almost Halloween uh, or getting into Halloween season, um, but a month away, I guess. Uh, you, it's always spring at Darling Data. If you would like to see me live and in person in about two months, or actually, no, uh, I guess just about a month now because it's right after Halloween. Oh, boy, time flies when you're Eric Darling. Uh, you can catch me November 4th and 5th at Past Data Summit in Seattle, Washington. And as always, if there is an event near you that you're like, God, why won't Eric come to this, my town and talk to me about SQL or my, 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 my weekend habits or, uh, I don't know, my fingernail collection, let me know what, what event is nearby you where we can talk about <laughs> your fingernails and why you shouldn't keep them. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's talk about this SQL Server stuff, shall we? I think that's a good idea. So um, I end up in my day-to-day -day life needing to pull data out of odd structures. Uh, by odd structures, I mean stuff inside a SQL Server that uh, is usually stuff like query plans, mm, uh, XML galore, uh, the block process report, which more XML galore, the XML deadlock report, uh, would you believe that's even more XML? And it's not on the list there, but um, the extended events, again, all XML. God, pff, it's just XML all the way down, really. You, you, would, you would think that 
SQL Server was just like an XML document database, <laughs> the, the, the rate that everything turns into XML in there. Uh, you may run into it elsewhere. You may need to you may find yourself importing XML files, doing or JSON. I don't know. Wave of the future. You might YAML. You might you might have another language that ends in ML, or sorry, another file format or specification that ends in ML that you need to mess with. And they all do strings weird. The main issue that I find is when I uh, need to compare uh, the data that comes out of uh, primarily XML structures. The stuff that I have to deal with is query related for the most part. So you have query hash and plan hash, those are binary eight. And then you have SQL handle and plan handle, those are var binary 64. So two entirely different beasts. And there's, like, I know that there's like some Microsoft posts with like shenanigans around like the stuff you can do with big ints. I can't always get that to work consistently. In some cases I can, in some cases I can't. It's I don't know. I, I, don't, I just don't understand what's different at the, in, in, the, in these things. Um, perhaps I am not XML enough. I don't know. I'm not an XML expert enough to tell you. But I do want to show you some stuff that I've learned while dealing with binary, stri binary strings that come, out of, um, that come out of various data sources. So if, you, if we look at this query, right, and we say uh, uh, we want to find out if this string that came out of, let's just pretend it came out of a query plan, is equal to this other binary value, SQL Server is going to say no, right? That is not equal. That's why we have a zero there. Remember the, the logic for this query is if this equals this, then one else zero. So we do not equal this. So we get a zero back. Even if we do something like this and we say convert this string to var binary eight, we still get a zero back. Why? That is crazy. We converted a string to var binary eight, or sorry, to binary eight. Why would it not match this thing? The answer is because when you convert strings in SQL Server that, uh, that you want to say are binary or var binary, you have to use convert with one of the little culture things. Um, there's one conveniently right by my head there. There's culture one and there's culture two, but you can see that I'm using that same thing in the binary eight one that I'm gonna show you now. So the difference here is uh, that one uh, does not attempt to add an OX to the beginning, and two attempts to add an OX to the beginning. So depending on like what you're dealing with, you might need to use one or the other, right? So like if we say, if we do these things, look at the different results that we get back, right? So I wanna show you all in one screen. If we just convert this string to binary eight, SQL Server does that like literally. It says, oh, this, the, uh, this string is now, this is the binary eight representation of this string. All right, that, that, that is not what we want. What we want is SQL Server to preserve the binariness of this string and actually treat this, th this string as a var binary value. We can do that with, with the OX using the, the one culture, and we can do that without the OX at the beginning uh, using the, uh, the, two, the two culture there. So if your string does not have an OX at the beginning, uh, that is one way to get that to happen. The same thing goes for var binary of just about any length. I'm showing you what I get in here from uh, like SQL and plan handles. It is the same deal. If you look at what we get from this one, this is not the, the binary that we have here. Again, this is SQL Server saying, oh, you're binary now. You, 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 we don't care about you. We're just gonna turn you into something else. Transmogrify you into some weird binary representation, binary representation of what's already a binary big air quotes string. So if we were to change our query logic here to say uh, convert, var, convert binary eight with the one on the end, now we're gonna get that one, we're gonna get that match back. So if you need to do stuff like this with binary data that comes out of weird data sources, or if you're getting a hankering to like, you know, pull data out of like, you know, XML for the plan cache, block process report, deadlock report, or even uh, some other extended event, this is the kind of stuff that you have to do. In my store procedures, when I'm like, this is from, these two are from Quickie Store. What I do is I pull the, I pull the value out uh, as, um, as a string, but I have a computed column in my table that does the conversion over for me so that I make sure that I get the right value from whatever ends up in there. And this is the best way that I've found to do it. You can also do that with, um, with the regular, with, uh, sorry, with the, um, 
Do I have two there? No, I, didn't, I just didn't scroll down to the right one. You can also do that with SQL handles like this. So this one, rather than just, this one converts to var binary 64 instead of var binary 8, because remember, SQL and plan handles are var binary 64. Uh, query hash and query plan hash are binary 8. So that's what I do when, when I'm pulling data. This is uh, out for quickie store stuff. In other parts of um, my store, in other store procedures of mine, this is specifically from SP Human Events, uh, where uh, I forget exactly which part this comes from. This might be from like the block process report stuff. What I'm doing specifically here is, for, like, notice for the first two that are binary eight, I'm doing the same thing where I'm getting that like you know slash value slash text from the XML, but for the top two, I could never get these to actually work like doing the excess hex binary thing, binary eight, they would always come back null or like an empty string or with the wrong value. So this is one of those things I was talking about, like this, this stuff can't always work, but when I get it as a big int from the XML and I convert it as a, to, var, to binary eight outside of that, then it works okay. So the big int to var binary eight in, in that case works, everything else, no bueno. But for the plan handle, which is var, var binary 64, I can do this neat little XML function trick with XS, XS colon hex binary, and that I can get to be var binary 64 natively. What's the difference? Damned if I know. I look at this XML and it all looks the same to me. It just doesn't work when <laughs> I actually query it. It's strange. Um, in SP Blitz Cache, there was a really, really, there was this weird bug in SQL Server up until like 2016 service pack something, uh, two or two and a half or <laughs> whatever, where um, it was like uh, 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 plan hash or query hash values were becoming sort of corrupted in a weird way uh, where they couldn't, like whatever was coming out of there was absolute junk. We were getting like wrong lengths and stuff. And this is what I had to do for, to get this to be right, was I had to say convert binary eight uh, this bunch of zeros, and then I have the right function there, and then I get a substring of the query hash, cutting off the OX, just getting everything after the OX, and then I get, uh, well, sorry, that's like the three to the 18th thing with this, this thing concatenated on, and then convert that to a binary with the two culture. So that was a really nasty thing that was happening in there. As far as I know, I still can't, I still couldn't pull that out of SP Blitz cache just because someone might be on a 2016 version that still has that bug. So there, there it's gonna stay with this confusing code, just trying to get a query hash and a plan hash to work. So be careful out there. If you need to work with uh, binary or var binary data, uh, how you handle it and, and convert, you basically can't use cast for this because cast doesn't allow you to supply a culture where you can tell uh, like with convert, you can tell it how to treat the string. With cast, you can't do that. Cast is usually a kind of crappy way of doing things. Um, I do kind of look forward to the day when Microsoft adds like the double colon cast that like Postgres and other databases have, but I don't think that would work here. I don't think that would fix this either. I think you pretty much straight up need convert for this one. So uh, be very careful out there with, with uh, how you treat your binary data because if you need to compare it to other binary data, it could be awfully, terribly, disastrously, and most importantly, incorrectly wrong. So, thank you for watching. Big chin. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope that uh, this video was of some use and utility to you. Otherwise, I'll just go jump out the window. You'll, the last thing you'll hear is the sound of shattering glass, and then there'll just be empty space on the screen for until my camera overheats, which takes about 40 minutes. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I, think, I, I think I hear Ma ringing the dinner bell, so I'm going to go stuff myself full of chicken and broccoli. That's, that's, what, that's what we do here at Darling Data. We, we stay healthy. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, goodbye.